As performers, we always try to decode uh, the secret message that a composer has uh, written uh, in the music. But we often think we should just count on our intuition to do so. So we ask ourselves, why do I have an No, why should we analyze a piece at all? We only need to play some notes, right? However, the identification of the notes in a piece of music or of this apple and how these notes are combined uh, together to form a meaning are not exactly the same thing. So if we want to play music in a meaningful way, we really need to look at the musical structures and at how the sounds are combined together. In this video, we will first look at what we can understand uh, as musical meaning from a historical perspective uh, and uh, also from a scientific point of view. And you will see how interesting that is. And then we will look at how this can translate into how we approach the study of a piece of music, uh, which I think is very interesting for all of you. Musical meaning has been described uh, in different ways. So for centuries, uh, we have investigated how to define meaning, what is this meaning in music, and if music has a meaning at all. But we have investigated much less how meaning is constructed during uh, the composition process. So imagine for a moment you would understand completely what message a composer has encrypted in the music. That would be awesome, right? Historically, there were two main questions uh, uh, scholars uh, uh, tried to answer. The first one we already seen was, does music have a meaning in itself? And the second one was, can music stand for something else? For example, for external aspects. Let's look, for example, at Hans Lick and Wagner's arguments about uh, meaning in music. For Hans Lick, uh, pure music is structured without references to anything outside itself. In contrast, for Wagner, music expresses human feelings and is very subjective. Other composers, like for example Busoni and Schoenberg, exchanged uh, quite a few letters. These letters are beautiful. Uh, and they talk in this lessons about the composition process and about how to create absolute music. Busoni and Schoenberg refer to this composition process as the search for a meaning free from external references. Clarification about musical meaning came later from the application of linguistic and semiotic theories to music. The music-language relation has been uh, the object of interest for many centuries uh, up to the present. So music can be compared to language in many aspects. Uh, so music and language are both based on sounds. They are both organized in structures and both can use an infinite number of combinations. So these are the main characteristics uh, that the two things they have in common. But the essential function of a language is to communicate a specific message, uh, while for music the overall function is to provide expression and to communicate affects through sounds. So the difficulty in uh, comparing uh, the linguistic meaning to the musical meaning derives from the absence in music uh, of a direct relation between sound and an object, like in language. For example, if I say apple, you imagine this, and that's why I have this in my hands since the beginning of the video. But if I play these two sounds, 
you can imagine anything directly related to this sounds, right? So that would be impossible unless I tie these two sounds to a specific context or to my own background. According to Wittgenstein, a philosopher uh, who lived at the beginning of the 20th century, the artistic experience and therefore the musical experience is an experience of observation of our reality. Art and music are based on providing this experience of the world in a limited context. However, we do not count as a meaningful experience what is uh, habitual and well known. And uh, we experience uh, only as art what is different, uh, what Wittgenstein defines as expressive. In the 60s, uh, Meyer, a music theorist, assumed something very similar. Uh, he assumed that the habitual contents established some patterns, while this expressivity arises when the habitual is somehow interrupted or modified. So through something unexpected and unusual in the musical experience, a listener can perceive uh, the musical meaning. Now, let's turn to science, right? What are neuroscientists saying about all that? Everything is in our brain, right? Everything happens there. Several studies investigated how our brain processes meaning in language and then they compared that to how we process music. The results are very interesting. What emerges from these studies is that music and language show similar brain activity in processing meaning. And that this activity happens in music in connection to elements in the music which are uh, different from the habitual and uh, from the expected. So what is unexpected is perceived as meaningful. The results of these experiments lead to the as assumption uh, that music communicates meanings uh, through musical cues, identities and differences, uh, and through uh, the details uh, that a composer has highlighted in the piece of music. Now I can play this this way. So this way. There's a huge difference, right? I can play, for example, this piece this way. this way the difference is in how I am reading the music by paying attention to the small details which are in the music I am completely changing the expressivity of such a piece and its meaningfulness at the same time. So why music analysis is such an important step when learning to play a piece of music? The answer is clear. All the details written in a piece of music make music unforgettable because these details activate a meaningful response in our brain and in the brain of our listeners. And these same details are carefully planned by the composers. For example, now if you look back at uh, um, the greatest pianists in the world, what made their performances so true and unforgettable was uh, their attention uh, to the message uh, communicated by the composer through the details uh, which are in the score. As performers, we will never be sure if uh, uh, the message we are communicating uh, is exactly uh, what the composer intended. Of course not. But on the one hand, the, the composer's intentions, 
in the design of the piece and then in delivering a certain message. On the other hand, this is uh, what a receiver will perceive uh, as meaningful. So this communication process uh, has to be translated by the interpreter, right? That's why we have that big responsibility. What we will not be able to know is what meaning in music is, how meaningful this meaning will be to whoever is listening to us, uh, and if the meaning of the message assigned to that particular piece of music uh, will ever coincide with what the composer uh, wanted to communicate. But what we can try to do as performers is to try to communicate that message with integrity and honesty uh, by reading the score correctly. Thank you so much for uh, uh, watching this video and um, I hope you enjoy that and that you can play the pieces of music uh, better in the future. I don't know, I will cut this part I guess. Bye! <laughs>